In this example, we're going to estimate the error in using the partial sum of a series. So we can only recall when we discussed the p-series, we also had the error. And so we are going to take the partial sum of the first 45 terms of the series 7 over k squared to estimate the error and the um, largest it can be. So the error, this er any error, this is the greatest error that it can be, and all anything else um, of the partial sums would be less than it. So the largest error that it can be of the first 45 terms we're going to we're going to discuss and find. Um, there are quite a bit of co preliminary conditions that we know just from experience with our series. So I went ahead and took this right out of our class notes. And it says that um, it has to be convergence and it also has to satisfy three conditions. Okay, so let's take a look what at those are. Well, essentially we have to, the first thing we have to do is we're gonna say let f of x be the function of our sequence a sub n, right? So it's going to be 7 over x squared. Then we can go ahead and talk about the conditions since the conditions talk, discuss it in terms of f. So then we do know 7 over x squared um, is continuous, so f is continuous. Um, the second one is f has to be decreasing. Well, we can go ahead and use our, um, a calculator, some technology for that. So I'll, I just have Desmos right here, and I'll just go ahead and put 7 over x squared in there, just like that. Um, we don't look at the negative values because our sequence doesn't start, or series doesn't start until after 1. And we're looking for the first to 45th terms, right? So we can see that in the first quadrant, it's definitely decreasing for one and n equal one and on. The third part is that allowing f of n to be the sequence 7 over n squared for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And then it does look like it just is a nice smooth function. So it does look like it satisfies those three conditions. OK, so next we can go ahead and find that error. So if we come back to our box here, we see that this series meets these three conditions. And therefore, we can go directly into finding our error. So it says the remainder, or in other words, our error, has to be less than n to infinity of f of x dx. So we're going to be using essentially the integral test. And then we will know the remainder estimate. And the reason why we're using n to infinity, and that's because we're looking at that right side, right? We're looking for 1 to infinity. And so therefore, we know that r sub n, in our case, n is 45, because it's the 45th partial term, right? Um, and then we can go ahead and set up the integral. We've already defined f of x right here. So now we know that let r sub n let n equal 45 such that r sub 45 is the remainder estimate for the 45th partial sum. Okay. Then, and then we can go ahead and now we can um, do the problem, right? Then we know that r sub 45 has to be less than the integral from 45 to infinity of f of x, in our case 7 over x squared, dx. So we can see that this is um, an improper integral. We'll be using a limit for that top uh, limit, of um, limit of integration. And then it kind of looks exactly like set up as our answer here, right? 
And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to work on that right side. And so now we know this is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the definite integral from, or we could say b, so it's different than the other n. So b goes to infinity of 45 to b of 7x squared dx. Okay, so now we have the limit as b goes to infinity of the definite integral, which is going to be, as I integrate, um, negative 7 over x evaluated from 45 to b. So then we get the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 7 over b minus negative 7 over 45. So we already know that the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over b, like that form, it shoots to 0. Right? We learned that in the first semester calculus. And then the limit as a limit of a constant is just the constant. So this limit of this constant will just be that constant. What's nice is we do get um, negative negative, so we end up getting this result to be 7 over 45. So therefore, we can say that the remainder estimate is at, um, at most 7 over 45. So if we go ahead and put that into the calculator here, I put 7 over 45. Notice the num value here, 0 0.15 re repeating. If I scroll up, we see that this is the correct answer. We don't usually write it in decimal form if it doesn't ask us, and especially if it's irrational.